Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all close our eyes for a moment. And truly thank the Lord for this wonderful day, this wonderful opportunity. Thank you for my sister Nuda and his family for opening up their home to share God's word. So, Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father in heaven, here we are, Lord, once again, gathered in the name of your Son, Jesus. To thank you, to praise you, to bless you, to glorify you. Today, as we gather here to hear your word, Holy Spirit, you are our teacher. The word of God says in John 6, 63, in Jesus' own words, the word is spirit, the word is life. And therefore, the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. The Holy Spirit is the best teacher whom we can ever have. So right now, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, I thank you, I praise you for this wonderful privilege you've given each one of us. Spirit of God, as we teach us the word. Make it practical for us to apply in our day-to-day -day life. Help us, Holy Spirit, through the word that we are going to hear to destroy every stronghold that we have in our minds which is contrary to your word. Open the eyes of our spiritual mind. Open the eyes of our hearts so that what we are going to listen today will transform our lives and our lives will never ever be the same. Spirit of God, today as we listen to you, each other. Make this teaching simple. Make it easy to understand. Make it practical for us to apply in our day-to-day -day life. Let the end of this session today be the beginning of a new life of faith, of victory, of abundance in the life that Jesus has promised each one of us. We thank you, Father, that you will confirm the word that you have spoken with accompanying signs and wonders, with healings, with miracles. In the glorious and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, my dear sisters, my dear brothers, I'd like to welcome you all. And once again, I would say thank you, Sister Noura, my brother, all of you, my dear sisters, for being here and for listening to the word. I want to begin today by going to the gospel of Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. And I want to begin with probably, you know, the verses after Jesus rose again from the dead. So can we go to Mark chapter 16, verse number 12? Okay, let's go to verse number 12. Yes. Can somebody read after that for me, please? Jesus, after this, Jesus appeared in a different name manner to two of them while they were on their okay. way to the country. They returned All right, and go ahead. The but they would not believe it. That's Jesus appeared to the 11 disciples and he went eating. He told them because they have faith and because they were too okay. stubborn. Verse number 12 says, after life. that, he appeared Jesus in another form unto two life. of them as they walked and went into the country. I'm country. sure you will remember in the book of Luke, Luke chapter 24, Jesus 
met two of his disciples who were on their way to Emmaus. Do you remember that? So this is exactly what Mark is talking about. He's talking about he appeared to them in another form. Who appeared to them? Wasn't Jesus the same Jesus who had, whom his disciples had seen at one time? Then why does the word of God say he appeared to them in another form? Why did he appear to them in another form? Because Jesus had risen from the dead. It was no more a physical body. It was a spiritual body. So it was difficult for somebody who is a physical being to recognize a spiritual being with your physical eyes. Are you with me? And I'm going to dwell a little bit on this because this is my starting point. Remember one thing. The word of God or the Bible has not been written to our brains. You know, most of the time we think when we are reading the Bible, you say, we read the Bible and say, why is the Bible so difficult? Why is it so complicated? Why is it that we are not able to understand the Bible? Is that right? I mean, I had this problem at one time. We read the Bible and say, what is St. Paul talking? Grace and mercy and sanctification. And there are some terms that are used. And we, we look at the Bible and we think, goodness gracious, why is the Bible so difficult to understand? But you know, my dear sisters and brothers, the Bible was never written to our human intelligence. The Bible was written, the word of God was written to our heart. And therefore, when you and I understand who we are now in Christ, through our new birth, after our baptism, that now you and I receive the heart of Jesus Christ. Are you listening? So these disciples of did not receive the new heart. Why? Jesus had risen again, but they had still not received the new heart. They had still not been able to understand spiritual truths. Can you tell me why? Holy Spirit. That's right. So the same disciples who were, who were timid, who were afraid, who couldn't understand anything, on the day of Pentecost, they leave the upper room where they were sitting like little rats. And he goes and preaches the first gospel and 3,000 people are added into the kingdom of God. So when you read this line where it says, after that he appeared in another form unto two of them, these were the two disciples who were on their way to Emmaus. And they were actually going away from Jerusalem into Emmaus, which means you were retreating from the place where the action is. Okay, let me, let me give you an example. Say, for example, you are going to work every day. Okay? You're going to work every day. And when you go to your work, you know, you go for 15 days, you go for a month, and you're fed up with the people who work. You're fed up with your boss. You're fed up with the colleagues you're working with. You're just tired by the way, you know, people are acting at you. They're, they're, they're bullying you. They're just dumping work on you. You're the new employee. And now you are coming back home with one thought in mind. I'm never going to go back to that place. Does it ring a bell to anyone? Is it something familiar to all of us? I, I face that. Ask Melanie, she's been working, I've been working. Whenever we join a new place, or even if you've been working for a while, a time comes, you're simply saying, what am I doing in this place? What am I doing in this place? I mean, I go to work, maybe I'll get the pounds, I'll get the rupees, I'll get the dollars at the end of the month. But is this all that is for me? Right? It's similar to these guys who are now retreating from Jerusalem onto a mouse. And while they are retreating, Jesus meets them on the way to a mouse. Now, did Jesus tell his disciples that he would rise again from the dead? Come on. How many times? Once, twice, thrice, 12 to 13 times he told them that he would have to die on the cross and three days later he would rise again from the dead. He had told them before he went to the cross. But it seems like he had never told them because the moment they realized he was on the cross, he had he had been killed and he had been buried. They thought that was the end of it. He would, what he said would never come to pass. But what he said did come to pass. On Resurrection Sunday, on Easter Sunday that we celebrate, he rose again from the dead. And now 
he has appeared to Mary Magdalene. He has appeared to the women. I don't know why Jesus always meets the women. Why he has a soft corner for the women. I don't know. He doesn't meet his disciples, but he goes to meet Mary Magdalene. Then he goes and meets the other women. And finally, he meets these two men on the way to Emmaus. And then he goes last at the end of the day to meet his other 11 disciples. So I really don't know what this connection is between Jesus and all women. So you, dear sisters, please consider yourself very blessed. Even God Almighty has favorite. They say the word of God says he doesn't have favorite. But see, praise God. He appeared to the women. He appeared to Mary Magdalene. Okay? Now, brother, please don't get disappointed. We'll, we'll settle this score later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. But don't get disappointed. Huh, with this. We'll, we'll, we'll settle the score later through scripture. <laughs> praise God. Praise God. So, he now, he now has met those two disciples on the way to Amos. And he tells them, of course, I'm not going to tell you what, we have already read that. He tells them, he speaks to them, their hearts are burning. Then they take him inside the house and then they are breaking bread. And while he's breaking bread, he disappears from their sight. Now, when he disappears from their sight, they say, oh, we saw the Lord. And no, as soon as they, the bread is broken, they eat the bread. They said, we must go back to Jerusalem. And inform the rest of the disciples that we have seen the Lord. By the time they reach there in Jerusalem, the doors are locked. Jesus meets these two guys as well as the other 11 who are sitting down. Are you listening? So, and after he appeared in another form unto two of them. Now, I was talking to you about, you know, and being in another form. Now, listen to this very carefully. The word of God, as I said, is never written to our brains. But it's written to our heart. These disciples do not have the spirit of God. So how did they see Jesus now? With their physical eyes. But they are looking at a spiritual Jesus. A resurrected Jesus. A Jesus who is no more in a physical form. And they are not able to recognize him. Are you understanding? In fact, even if you go to Matthew chapter 28 towards the end. Just before Jesus was rising from the dead. Okay, let's go there. Let's go over there. Go to Matthew chapter 28. I want to just show you this other form. I want you to understand why I want to explain this. Is because spiritual things can never be perceived with our, with our human understanding. Spiritual things cannot be understood with our brains. Spiritual things cannot be perceived with our five senses. But it can only be perceived through the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's go there. Uh, let's go to verse number 16 and read. Up to verse number 17. 16 and 17, let us read. Come on, somebody read that. Now read, read that. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. Now, these are the 11 disciples. Why 11? Judas had already committed suicide, right? So these are the 11 disciples. Yes. Okay. Now look at verse number 70. Read very slowly. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Some doubted. Can you read that? And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some, but some doubted. Listen, they had seen him on Easter Sunday. They had seen him at the, at the, at the seaside. When, you know, he met Peter, he says, how many times you love me? He gave them breakfast also. He had seen some of the disciples on the way to Amos. He had seen them so many times before he ascended to the Father between the resurrection and the ascension. Now it's time for Jesus, for Jesus' flight to take off to heaven. They are looking at him. They are worshipping him. But some of them are doubting, is this really Jesus? Are you listening? Some of them are doubting, is it really Jesus? That means it was difficult for them in their physical sense to really understand who Jesus was. And that brings us to a very important point, which I was mentioning earlier. Today, my dear sister and brothers, as I'm sharing the word with you, please understand the word of God cannot be understood unless we have accepted Jesus, unless we have truly made him the Lord of our life, and the Spirit of God resides on the inside of us. 
So the starting point before we can go out and be a help to somebody, you know, we look around ourselves, we see there's so many, as you, as you mentioned, Sister Noura, there's so many people having difficulty in their marriages. There are so many, today marriage is never being honored, although, although God has not changed. He says, what God has joined together, no man shall divide. Is that right? God has said that. But today, you know, we seem to change partners faster than even we change our clothes. You know, the concept is, you know, we, we, we can buy a new car, we can buy a new house, we'll get a mortgage. Once we get this mortgage, we go and get that mortgage and good. And, you know, we, we, we change our house, we change the walls. We, we, the concept is you can change everything. But there are some things you cannot change because these are ordained by God. God has joined you together. It's not that, you know, the priest came and says, you are no more, no, you're, lo, you're, 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 you're going to accept each other in good times, in bad times. We say that in front of the whole church, we have a nice, you know, reception and we have a honeymoon and then all of a sudden, there is no moon, no honey, nothing at all after that. Is that right? Come on, tell me about it. We seem to find, we want to go and find greener pastures. <laughs> doesn't it so, doesn't, isn't it true? But that's what the reality of things today is. And why is it happening? Why is it happening? Because people do not know the truth. They are only going by their five senses. They are only going by their senses. But when you understand that this particular marriage or anything of God is not written to this brain of us, but it's written to our heart, this heart of us must believe the word must understand what God has said. So when God says something, we obey it. We just do it without questioning it. That's really believing the word. Amen. So it says, Amen. and they worshipped him, but some of them doubted. Now let me come on this line to ourselves today. Do we go to church? Do we go to Eucharist? Do we go to the mass? Do we pray the daily rosary? Do we have our novenas? We do all these things, right? How many of us really believe that when we pray or we go to the Eucharist or we are praying the rosary, we are really connecting or we are just doing lip service? You know, I have a live service. You know, I, I, I share in St. Joseph Chapel every Sunday in Asagam in Goa when I'm there. And, you know, I was telling everybody, I said, how many of you do the family rosary? All hands went up. How many of you go to Sunday Mass? Hands went up. How will you, some of you go for daily Mass? Some of their hands went up. So I said... When you finish the rosary, are you really praying the rosary? He says, we, we do our rosary every day now. And then after you finish the rosary, what do you say? Finish, rosary finished. Finish the mass for the day. We have finished our mass. Right? Over. Mass is over. We have finished our rosary. We have finished those novenas. We have finished the litany. Now it's time for us to eat chanas and eat a little cop. Right? Because we have taken our relationship with the Lord more of a ritual. More of a breakfast, lunch, dinner. Or a little devotional in the morning. Our relationship with the Lord is not a devotional in the morning. It's not a little bit of a Bible study during the day. Or come to Bible class somewhere in one, once a week. Or probably, you know, uh, go to church once in the, in, in the day and go for mass. And say our rosary at the end of the day. And do our little grace before the meal. That's not basically our relationship with the Lord. Our relationship with the Lord is supposed to be 24-7. Now, let me tell you something. If you go to your Bible with you, if you really see the preachers of old. No, don't, don't bring the Bible. No, no, I just wanted to share the If you look at the preachers of old, those who, they used to always carry the Bible. So, you know, he was Mr. Preacher. They used to carry their Bible and they had a particular hairstyle. And, maybe, and they used to go with their little Bible with you. So, you know, he was a preacher. Today, you can't recognize whether he's a preacher or not because they've got all your apps and all on the, on the mobile. You've got your iPad. Now, look at this iPad. I'm not carrying the Bible with me. So, nobody knows whether I'm a preacher or not. Right? But the point what I wanted to make is, if the word of God is inside of your heart, do you need a Bible or need notes on, on, in some Bible somewhere? Or do you need some app somewhere? Where should the word be? In my heart. Because when the word is in my heart, 24-7, the Lord is going to be speaking to me and I'll be living my life as a true believer, a true Christian, a true Catholic. I will be doing what the Lord has said because I have the word inside of me. Otherwise, it will be like a breakfast, lunch, dinner. Miss Zale. Okay, my mass is over. I finished the rosary. Come on now, let's go and see and watch television. Let's watch the evening news. Because we have finished our rosary. We have finished that novena. Come on, man, let's say the rosary today. Let's all sit together and we finish an activity. 
you know, my dear sister and brothers, if you're just going to do your prayer or do a, a, a go to the mass, or go to do a novena, or go to do something, just like an activity, it's better not to do an activity. It's basically, I'm not saying that you don't do it either. You know, sometimes, you know, you can just probably reflect or meditate on one decade of the rosary. Take, for example, the, 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 the glorious mystery. Take the first mystery, the resurrection. Just take the resurrection and probably pray the one decade and meditate on that resurrection for about, say, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, one decade. So every time you're saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, or the Our Father, you are looking and imagining yourself, Jesus rising from the dead. You're seeing him rising in his glory. You can see the marks on his hand. You can see the marks on his, of the nails. And you can see him so real. Now you are meditating on one decade for such a long time. That particular meditation or that particular reflection or that particular, you know, time contemplation that you have done with that one decade is so more meaningful and so more enriching than doing a full rosary of five decades in 10 minutes and say, Zale, finished. And what you got out of it? Nothing. You just did it as an activity. Does that make sense? And sometimes, you know, when we go to the mass, if you know one, one priest is going like a real supersonic uh, train, you know, so that's the best priest we would like to go. We want to finish his mass in 30 minutes. And some priests will be there like, you know, by the time that priest is already finished, this priest is still going on with his homely one hour, one hour, 10 minutes. And we are just, we're just looking at our watch because for us, time is money. I think in the UK, you understand when I say time is money because now every minute counts. You punch in and your clock starts with your, with your pound, right? So I understand what you mean by time is money. But in God's kingdom, when you understand who you are in Christ, we are just passing pilgrims on this earth. This relationship that we have with the Lord is something that is going to hold us in such good state right up to eternity. Imagine I was just talking to the people in Stevenage last night. And I was just saying to them, in a thousand years from now, maybe in a hundred years from now, Will it matter whether you were a CEO of a company? Will it matter whether you were a general manager? Will it matter you were president? Will it matter that you were a Boris Johnson or whether you were a prime minister or a president of a country? Will it matter at all if you are not going to make it one day to be with the Lord? Will it matter whether you had a big house or a big mansion or a big car? Will it really matter if your relationship with the Lord is poor right now? And you are not going to make it one day to be with the Lord. It's either going to be left or it's going to be right. It's going to be goat or it's going to be sheep. Right? And so it is important for us to understand that it's not just empty rituals of prayers and rosaries and novenas and all these other things. But it is a relationship with the Lord. A relationship with the Lord. And that relationship with the Lord can only take place when you and I have the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why the word of God is not written to our brains, but it's written to our hearts. Okay. So here he says, and when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Okay. Let's go back to Mark chapter 16, Aaron. Mark chapter 16, verse number 12. We were there on verse number 12. I just took you to talk to you about the other form. Okay. He we, we said that, you know, he met them in another form. Correct. And when they, okay. And that he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country and they went and told it unto the residue neither believe they them this is talking about whom those two disciples one was can you tell me the name of one of them Cleopas okay you can go to Luke chapter 24 I'm not going to teach about him it's just by the way for, for your general knowledge in case there's a quiz here around in your church you can, you can talk about one of the disciples that's Cleopas okay so Cleopas was one of those. He was the uncle of Jesus. Because uh, Cleopas's wife was Mary's sister. She also was a Mary. Okay, just for your information. This, is, this won't take you to heaven or it won't take you to hell if you don't know it. All right. So, and they went and told. So now these disciples, they told Jesus, come into, my, into our house. And you know, it's late. Come on, have bread with us. And now Jesus is sitting with them and breaking bread. And as he breaks the bread... He disappears from their sight. So they leave that place and they go back to Jerusalem. That's what it says in verse number 13. And they went and told it unto the residue, to the rest of them. I think this is old English or probably, you know, King James English residue. So it is unto the rest of them. Neither believed they them. So even though 
even though those two disciples had seen Jesus, even though Mary Magdalene and the women had come and told these disciples that they have seen the Lord, now these two disciples have seen the Lord. The word of God says they did not believe in them. Is everyone with me? So look at the opportunities that they had. Jesus, before he died, before he went to the cross, he told his disciples not less than 12 to 13 times that he would go to the cross and he would rise again on the third day. Now he has risen from the dead. He's appeared to Mary Magdalene. He's appeared to the women. They go and tell the disciples, but they don't believe in, 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 in the resurrection. Now Jesus, later in the day, appears to two of his disciples, one who is Cleopas on the way to Emmaus. They see the Lord. They go back and tell those other disciples, but they don't believe in him. Now look at what happens in verse number 14. Let's read verse number 14. Afterward, as they sat at and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. So, what is this verse 14 saying? These two disciples went to uh, uh, Jerusalem and told the rest. They did not believe. Now, at the end of the day, Jesus himself, this is now Easter Sunday. If you look at verse number 14, we are on Easter Sunday. Do you have, my dear sister Noura, do you have Easter eggs today to celebrate? <laughs> no? no? I should have taken some other thing. No, maybe I should have taken some other, other, other gospel today. See, I never knew you had not been preparing Easter eggs today. We are on Easter Sunday. Okay. So, verse number 14 says, Afterwards he appeared unto the eleven. As they sat at meat and upbraided them, he he gave them a scolding. He 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 he, he, he um, you know what? He, what should I say? He um, he reprimanded them. Yeah, he reprimanded them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. Now you read this word believe. Can you see that word? Can you highlight that word? Believe, Darren, please. Because, because, because they believe not. I want to ask you, my dear sisters and brothers, what do you understand by the word believe? Come on. There's no right answer. There's no wrong answer. Then we go to mass. As soon as the mass is, the Lord be with you. Da, 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 and then we also say the I believe. Correct? What is the meaning of this English word? And again, we are not in Bible class right now. For, just for a few minutes. We are in a classroom of nine great students. The teacher comes into the class and she says, Boys and girls, I want you to tell me what is the meaning of the English word believe. I want you to tell me what is the meaning of the word believe. Faith. Believe means something is going to happen. Faith. All right. Okay. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? What is the meaning of the word believe? Mr. Noura? Brother, I did not get your name. Brother Alfred. And you, sister? Joyce. Sister? Sister Rosalind. All right. Okay. Sister Rosalind, what do you understand by the word believe? Except? Okay. True. Okay. Sister Joyce? Acknowledge. Okay. Okay. Let me give a little bit of understanding to you of the word belief. Because if you understand this word to, today, it's going to change the way you're going to look at the Bible. Okay? Now we are we are here all seated in this room. Right? You hear a knock on the door. You are right there at the door. And you hear a knock on the door. Real violent knock on the door. And this person there is, can you please all leave your house? Immediately, there's a fire behind and it's already caught fire to the house. What do you think that all of us here in this room shall do? Sorry, how do you do? We'll start running. Why will you start running? 
because you believe that message. Okay. I'll give you another example. Your, I don't know, acting prime minister is it? This is an acting prime minister right now. He, Boris, he sends a message out, okay, to everybody. Today Saturday. He sends a message out, and everybody is shooting out message to everybody on WhatsApp, saying that by midnight tonight, what is going to happen? No, 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 I'm not, no, no, not resign. By midnight tonight, all those who are holding 20 pound bills must replace them with new pound bills. Even though I've got new notes for you, nice, you know, very smooth notes. I'm going to, all those who are holding 20 pound notes have to re replace them with new notes before midnight, failing which those notes will be pieces of useless paper after midnight. One second after midnight will be useless. Now, since all of you should be having some cash with you, what will you do in such a situation? You will give it to the preacher, correct? Because you believe that you have to buy, buy to unnecessary waste them and give it to the preacher. You'll do that. You will go to the kiosk and you will exchange it. Why you do that? Because you believed that if you don't exchange it, and he says, you know, all the banks are open. There'll be kiosks within a hundred meters. You know, some some uh, kiosks are made kept there so that you, you for your convenience. They've just been done without informing. But you have to exchange it today. Now, when he gives the message like that, won't everybody queue around there and get their old uh, twenty-pound notes exchanged? That means they got a message and they responded to that message. So, what is the meaning of believe? Believe simply means. My response to the message. Believe simply means my response to the message. Now you are hearing the message right now as I'm sharing the word. As you are receiving it, you are processing it with the intention of, with the intention of believing it, right? So that you will be able to, so that you will be able to respond to it. See, listen to this, my dear brother and sister. If you hear a message today, or you hear a message anytime in the church, or you hear a message even in the secular world, and you don't take any response to it, you don't have any response to it. Hey, somebody come, get lost, man. Why have you come and tell me about the fire? Doesn't matter. This brother has come all the way from India. We are, we are in God's presence. We are hearing God's word. Go, get lost. That means you do not believe the message. At the moment you said, come on, let's all run out because you believe you took a response to that message, correct? Or for this matter for the pound. So anything that you hear, for example, right now, let's talk about something relevant. COVID-19 came two years ago, three years ago. Now all of a sudden the TVs are blaring with the news. Cases are increasing. The, the, the TV is saying, the newspaper is saying now cases are increasing. So what happens in such a situation? Everybody has brought a lot of liquids now. Everybody has decided to put their mask on again. Probably if there's another booster dose, you are getting ready to get an appointment for booster dose. Why are you preparing all these things? Because of what you heard. Correct? Now, because you heard that bad news that COVID is increasing, you are taking corresponding action. When you believe God's word, will you be doing all those things? Okay, before we go to that, let's go to the other thing over there. So now, we, I talked to you about the word believe. Now we are in Bible class. Now, now forget about school now. And in 8th, ninth graders, forget about it. Now we come to the word of God. Now we come to Bible class. And now I ask you, what do you mean by believing in Jesus? When I talked about believing otherwise, pounds or security, you said, I'll run, I'll go and exchange my pounds. You will have a response. Now we are in Bible class. What does it mean to believe in Jesus? Respond to his word. Perfect, Sister Joyce. 100% right. So when I respond to his word, because we all believe, we always respond to his word. If somebody slaps me on one cheek, I always offer the other cheek, right? Correct, brother? <laughs> Come on. No, no. We don't. No. So, are we believing? You're not responding. Somebody says for you, what 
an ass you are, man. What is cool you are? I'm an ass. Your father and you are on. Grandfather was an ass. You call me a monkey? <laughs> Not only monkey, you come from a generation of donkeys, man. And not only you will tell him, you will tell even your neighbors. That fellow is calling him a monkey. Doesn't realize that he's he's a he's a he's a king of donkeys. I'm asking you, if we are really believing, then our response will show that we are believing. If I my response is not meaning that I'm believing, I'm only doing lip service. Right or wrong? Now let me take you to one scripture concerning the same thing. Let's go to James chapter one, verse number. Uh, verse number twenty-two. Adil, can you put James chapter one, verse number twenty-two, please? Come on, read that verse loudly. But read that verse loudly. But be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving. Your own self. Before I explain the scripture, let me tell you one thing. You know, when a person dies, when a person dies, that means you know somebody has lost a loved one. They'll always tell them, "Very nice man is gone to be with the Lord." Right or wrong? And even on the obituary, when you put in the news, coming home, which home I don't know, coming home, never more to roam. That's what we sing, right? Even when we put on the obituary, say coming home, which home are you talking about? Whether he was in the home with the Lord, we don't know. But the moment he dies, everybody is going home. That means nobody is going anywhere else except going home. Going home where? To heaven. And yet we have one one uh, seven day mass. We have months mind mass. We have your mass. We have masses, perpetual masses. For what now? For that soul to go to, and we have already said he's coming, coming home. My point is, if you are praying for that soul to go to be home with the Lord, you already declared no when the person that what a good man is already gone to be with the Lord. That means he's not gone anywhere else. He's gone to be with the Lord, correct? And yet you're going there and praying and giving masses and praying for the soul and praying for the souls in purgatory and spending so many prayers you're praying, right? Now I want to ask you, my dear sister and brother, listen to this. What did the Jesus say? When you believe in Him, you are saved for all eternity. Did He say that? Come on, let me let me let 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 let's go out of. Okay, before we go this. In James one twenty two, he says, "Be you doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves." That means, can we deceive ourselves? Can we deceive ourselves? Are we deceiving ourselves? The moment we hear the word and we don't do what it says, we have already deceived ourselves. And yet. Just because we went to church, Zalim, finish. We finished the rosary. We finished our weekly mass. We finished, feeling so nice, man. Nice homely was given. Beautiful. What the the priest? I like the priest hairstyle also. And you know the way he spoke. Everything we heard, and we are all praised for the priest and whoever who shared the word. We are all praised. We are all, you know. Oh, Father, can you come and have come and have lunch with me? I mean, we we are so much in love with the priest. Are we in love with his message? I don't know. So whatever message he gave was nice, but now I seem to like the priest in his style. Because you like the priest or you like the preacher, does it going to help you? It's not going to help you. But the message that he gave, you believed it and put it into practice. You are already on the way to heaven. Are you with me? So this word is saying, be not only hearers, but be doers of the word. Now. For me to be a doer of the word, is it going to be something easy? Come on, let's face it. Is it easy? No. I am living in the world, and I'm also supposed to live in the word. Now, when I'm living in this world, there is always going to be challenges for me to live. But praise God for the Holy Spirit, who's like a humming device on the inside of me. Who's continuously talking to me? You know, sometimes we think that God will only talk to us when we go to church. God will only talk to us when we are praying. God will only talk to us when we are having Bible class. 
God will only talk to us when we go to a retreat. But do you know that God is talking to us 24/7 because he lives on the inside of us. But the question is are we listening? Are we listening? The point is if you are listening to the word of God then you will continuously be sensitive to the holy spirit because the holy spirit will always speak the word of God. See remember when the holy spirit speaks he will not talk about the weather he will not talk about covid 19 he will not talk about you know washing your hands he will not talk about putting a mask he will not talk about talk about booster dose he will talk about the word. So what will he say? He will tell you what Jesus has already done for you on the cross. And when you believe what Jesus has done for you on the cross, you will respond to that message. Now I will show you pertaining specifically to COVID-19. Okay? We need to get out of that fear. We need that fear to be flushed out just like you know when we go to the bathroom and you know we go to do our, our usual job of the morning, we use the flush and we flush it out, right? we need to flush the fear out of our system how do we do that we have to know what the word of god says let's go to matthew chapter 8 verse uh, 17 okay let's uh, let's begin with verse number 15 matthew chapter 8 verse number 15 okay let's start with first verse number 14 aaron let's start with verse number 14 and let's go right up to 16 then we'll come to 17 Praise God. Now listen to this very carefully. I'm just going to quickly run through these four verses. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. You all know that Peter was a married man, right? Because he would not have a mother-in-law if he was not married, right? So Peter had a wife. Nobody talks about his wife. Nobody talks about his children. Brother, are you listening? Okay. Okay. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever. The word of God says in verse number 15. Listen to this. And he touched her hand. What he did? He touched her hand and the fever and the fever does it say he, he brought his stethoscope he went into his box he said peter john where have you kept my stethoscope bring it here come on bring the medicine box of you know all the antibiotics and all the tablets and all which are there come on let's let's fix her up did he do that all that he did was touched her hand and the fever left her and when the fever left her what did she do she got up and she began to minister unto them what did she begin to, what is the meaning of she began to minister unto them she must have said what do you want to have today tea coffee biscuits right so she was ready to go into the kitchen and do whatever whatever, whatever. so she was basically going to others before that what is she doing sleeping in the bed because she had a fever okay verse number 16 when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word ah he cast out the spirits with his word he simply told those spirits get out and they had to obey are you listening now listen to this my dear friends when jesus healed the sick people how did he heal the sick people with his with his word that means he spoke that means he spoke words right at other times when jesus healed people how did he heal people by touching that's right so some people he touched some people he did not even touch he just spoke you remember the centurion's servant he said 
only speak the word century say only speak the word and my servant shall be healed by the way he has not even touched that fellow he doesn't even have a mobile phone huh? can, can you give me his number let me talk. oh in the name of in my name get out he would not even say. just spoke the word and somebody is far away is getting healed is that right so jesus healed by touching people or jesus healed by speaking the word right okay when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that was sick this is not what i wanted to tell i'm going to the next verse but before i go to the next verse jesus healed everybody with his word right jesus healed some people by touching his hand on them like peter's mother in law now listen what i'm going to ask you. have you that same power to heal the sick or is it only with some people i said jesus healed people by laying hands on them jesus healed people by speaking the word my question to each one of you is do you as a believer of the lord jesus christ have the same power you have it sister nora sure guaranteed 100% computer lock kon banega garobadi computer lock right okay. anybody here in this place anybody in this place has got any pain in your body any sickness in your body come on who's got come brother alfred come come here. come sister nora come here. Can you put for me John chapter fourteen verse number twelve? Aaron. John chapter fourteen verse number twelve. John chapter fourteen verse number twelve. What does it say, brother? Can we can we read? Somebody read loudly. Very okay. late. You read. Very late. I say unto you. He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Listen to this: what Melanie just read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, how did Jesus heal? By touching or by speaking the word. Correct. Now look at what verse number twelve says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, Sister Nura, you listen. He, she that believes in me, the works that I do, shall you also do. So, what do you want to do? You want to speak words, or you want to lay hands on him? You want to surely lay hands on him? You have never laid hands on him before. Never, never laid hands on him. You have. He says never. He forgets. But today, when you lay hands on him, you are going to lay hands because of the scripture, right? Or you have a choice. You you can speak words or you can lay hands on him. Which what do you want to do? You want to lay hands. Come here. Come here, brother. Come here. Come here. You stand. Come, sister Nura. Come here. You just read there. Jesus healed when he spoke words. Jesus uh, healed by by laying hands on them. Correct? Now you said I'm going to lay hands. I'm going to show you, but don't worry. Don't be. Don't be. Get, this is not a test, or this is not some sort of you know we are we on reality TV or something. Don't worry about that. My question is, you all going to learn? This brother, brother, brother Alfred, what what sort of pain, a problem do you have? I've been booked for knee surgery, ligament, and knee joint. Praise God! Isn't this wonderful? <laughs> Praise <laughs> God! Thank you, Jesus. See, if we did not have a case like this, we would never know the power of God, right? See, if you have been scheduled for a surgery, and when you understand God's word, you're going to see the glory. You're going to see the miracle happening, right? Because the word of God says. When those who believe in Jesus lay hands and when they speak the word, there will be healings, right? Right or wrong? So I want you to understand that He's your patient. 
you are the one who is going to lay hands on him and you are going to pray for him but in order for him to receive that healing you must believe and i just give you the scripture what it says it says when you believe in jesus you will do the same works that you that he did so what did jesus do he laid hands or he spoke words and that's what you're going to do and the moment you do that next moment you see his ligaments his joints are all fixed by the holy spirit are you with me all are you with me okay now before we pray before we pray brother alfred you believe that jesus has already healed you on the cross the word of god says he has already taken all our sicknesses on the cross he already bore it so is he going to heal you now or has he already healed you i hope he healed me no no listen to me yeah. in your body you have a pain you have a problem in your body correct let's go back let's go slightly back in your body you have a pain in your body correct now my question is the word of god says he carried all our infirmities and he bore all our diseases when he hung there on the cross he took covid 19 johnny chrome tommy chrome monkey chrome monkey gate whatever whatever sicknesses the scientists are coming with that were already he carried on the cross 2000 years ago that means he has already healed us correct do you believe what he did for you yeah, yeah. Have you have to or you believe it no question is you have to or you because the word says so you believe it if if the word says you believe it right it's not my word it is his word so if you believe the word you will believe what he says the word says he already took our sicknesses on the cross correct if you believe that he has already healed you what will you say to jesus heal me thank you dear man thank you jesus did you all hear that yeah. the moment my brother alfred said thank you jesus that is faith if he said heal me that would be hope and jesus never said your hope healed you he said your faith healed you so the moment he understood that jesus has already healed him on the cross he has already been in faith my sister nora is ready to pray and lay hands on him because she believes that just as jesus laid hands and spoke the word and people got healed she also is going to lay hands on him and she is going to see the healing did you understand he has the faith because the word says he's already been healed by jesus she lays hands on him to say that if jesus said that believers shall lay hands and they shall be well i'm going to lay hands and today i'm going to see the glory are you with me please understand see we are not here just to do some experiment and say okay you prayed and we are first have to have that understanding and we have that understanding everything goes now before you pray my brother alfred i want to ask you a question the word of god says if you and i have any unforgiveness listen to this huh if you have any unforgiveness unforgiveness is a barrier okay how will i explain this see for example now you are in summer months here it doesn't rain but i have got my car parked probably about say about 20 or 30 yards away from your home and i need to go to my car and it's raining what would i do to go to my car use an umbrella correct and that umbrella will stop me from getting wet in the same way in the same way if i have any unforgiveness inside of me my unforgiveness is like an umbrella blocking every healing of god every blessing of god every good thing of god his rain is pouring on the good and bad alike but because of my unforgiveness my umbrella of unforgiveness everything of god is not falling on me it's falling outside the umbrella because i myself have blocked so my question is do you have any unforgiveness towards anybody mm-hmm. no you have no unforgiveness towards your parents to your brothers and sisters to your in-laws to her to them to your neighbors to the government to the bosses nobody you, you nobody ever ever upset you in your life sometimes when she said then you don't get angry because it was not nothing like unforgiveness or something like that just when cross yeah i mean that, that normal thing. yeah the normal thing but i'm saying there is no there's nothing that you are holding against her or holding against anybody that the moment you know you see that person everything like you know all that is being pent up on the inside is coming out and it comes out through words no not through words i will keep away 
You'll keep away. Yes, yes. keep away me. Yes, he will keep away because he doesn't want to say anything. He'll keep away, but uh, deep down, then he can't keep it. So inside, you're holding it, which sort of surfaces again and again. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep away from that person. You'll keep away from that, that person, person, but 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 keep, but harm. if you're keeping away from 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 probably the Boris Johnson, it's okay. You don't need to see Boris Johnson. But if you if you're keeping away from her, you cannot keep away from her. So when you keep away from her, that means during this time you're having unforgiveness, right? And say at that time the enemy strikes you, and you are in unforgiveness. When you are in unforgiveness at that point in time. Who's having access into your life? And at that very moment, say the devil strikes you and he knocks you off. See, my brother Alfred absolutely understood it. Do you understand? Because everybody, when they pass away, they say, where is he gone? Gone to be with the Lord. He was a good man. He was, she was a good woman. She was so, so, she always smiled at me at the bus stop. At the church, she always smiled at me. We always know people on the outside. But what? is happening on the inside that only we know between you and the Lord correct that's why unforgiveness becomes a block as it becomes a blessing blocker it becomes a healing blocker to receive from the Lord the Lord is not the one who's stopping our miracle the Lord is not the one who's stopping our healing we ourselves have opened an umbrella which is blocking our miracle but what happened brother if this person said for example in the church yeah Tells the stories that this person, this, that person, that that, which I don't like. Which you don't like. Yeah. Now you have so to keep away from the person. Ah, so it is better for you to keep away from such a person who can, who basically is bringing all the poison of all around, yeah. and that's, that's perfectly good. fine. That's perfectly fine. In fact, on the contrary, you have to tell this person. Listen, if you're going to tell me about them and them, I don't want to hear about it. If you're going to tell me something about me and about you. Let's have a conversation between you and me. I don't want to hear about them. If I need to talk to them, I'll talk to them directly. Or if you need to tell me about somebody else which is going to concern me, it's fine with me. So it will help me in some way. To which, But if I'm going to hear just a story from other people, I don't want to hear it. You need to tell the person straight on their face. I think you need to do that because, listen, my dear sister, brother, it's good that, that you un- I mentioned about this, brother Alfred. When a person truly loves someone, When a person truly loves someone, we are told to love our neighbor, right? We are told to love God and we are told to love our neighbor. If you love your neighbor, you will tell him the truth. You will tell him the truth. If you don't tell him the truth, it means you love yourself more because you don't want to spoil your relationship with him by hiding the truth from him. So don't hide the truth from him. Tell him, listen, but don't tell him, you know, you are always complaining. Tell him nicely, listen, I just want to have a chat with you. I want to tell you, please do not tell me about somebody I want you to talk between ourselves. If there's something that will help me to know about it, praise God, it's fine. Because from today, I don't want you to talk about other people to me. This should be the, I I hope you understand. It's perfectly fine to tell that person. But keeping away from that person is keeping the hurts inside. And that will allow the enemy access into our life and stop us from receiving our miracle. It can happen between spouses. It can happen in our own family. You know, okay. I, I, let's let's finish this and I'll continue later. But I've also come. I've also had testimonies where spouses don't talk to each other for years. They have not even had a conversation among themselves for years. Okay, and they live under the same roof. Everybody on the says knows them as husband and wife, but they are not even communicating with each other because they are having a cold war. Okay, but do you think that that just because they are living under one roof, they are not living without the devil? Without they have got three people there. Yeah. Because the enemy is going to definitely have a hold and he's going to have a great time with, 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 with destroying their marriage and destroying their family. So it's important to get that unforgiveness out. So apart from that, apart from avoiding, there is no other unforgiveness in your opinions. Praise God. Praise God. So now, my sister uh, Noura, I want you to lay your hands on my brother, Alfred. Okay? Close your eyes. You close your eyes. And I'm going to give you the prayer, give you the words. And then you will learn it. All of us will learn in later. Okay, let's start. So lay your hands on it. Lay your hands on it. Close your eyes. And concentrate. And I want you to concentrate and focus on Jesus. Okay, you're not focusing on him. You're focusing on Jesus, on his word. His word says that when those who believe in him lay hands on the sick and when they speak the word, they shall be healed. Okay. So, I want you to say this now with me. Say this. 
Not you. you. You're going to listen carefully to the words. Say, loving Father, I thank you and praise you for giving me this wonderful opportunity to pray over my dear husband. Your word says that when believers lay hands on the sick, they shall be healed. So believing in your word, I right now have laid my hands on my husband. And in your name, Jesus, I'm speaking to that spirit of infirmity. I'm speaking to that spirit of arthritis. I'm speaking to that spirit of pain. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of infirmity, I bind you, I curse you, and I rebuke you, and I command you to get out of Alfred's body. In the name of Jesus, you spirit of infirmity, you have no power, no place in Alfred's body. From this moment onwards. And I set Alfred. Completely free. From that spirit of infirmity. And now. By the power of the Holy Spirit. I claim your promise Lord. In Psalm 22. Verse number 14. Psalm 22 verse number 14 says. That all of Jesus' bones, bones were out of joint. Out of joint. None, of None of his bones were broken. But all his bones, all his bones were, out of joint. were out of joint. So by virtue of the pain Jesus bore, pain Jesus bore every, joint, every joint, every bone, every, bone, every, tendon, every tendon, every cartilage, Every muscle, every ligament, every tissue, every nerve in Alfred's body receives healing now. I command all the bones in Alfred's body, especially in his spine, in his disc, in his pelvic bone, to be aligned now, to go back to their rightful position. In the, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit I, command I command every part of Alfred's body, every part of Alfred's body to, be to be lubricated by the power of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit to, be to be lubricated in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. And as all these things are happening right now, happening I, thank right I thank you, Holy Spirit, for operating Alfredo, for operating Alfredo. every part of his body. Every organ of his body, every cell of his body functions perfectly in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for performing this operation, Alfredo, for setting forth all his pains from his body and destroying every sickness, every infirmity and setting him free. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Now, my brother Alfred, my brother Alfred, the prayer has been said. The word has been spoken. You believe the word. You believe what now? Is God going to heal you as he already healed you? He's going to heal me. No, he's going to heal you as he already healed you on the cross. So what we do, we, what we did, we simply received. When she spoke, she only received. See, if you're going to believe that she's going to heal you, God is going to heal you, that you are in hope. But when you believe he has already healed you, that is faith. So all that she did was simply used her faith, agreed with your faith, and the rest of the moment, the healing has been done. So you believe you're healed. Now start marching and start bending and doing whatever you could not do. Come on, keep saying thank you, Jesus, and start marching like a soldier. Come on, come on, start marching up, down, up, down, fully. Come on, full, full speed. Come on, raise your legs, march like a soldier. Come on, you have to open your mouth and keep saying thank you, Jesus. Come on, you can do like this. Come on, thank you, Jesus. 
up down full full speed up come on you're not focusing on the pain you're just focusing that you're healed come on you're marching like that. that's your faith come on thank you jesus come on faster thank you jesus open your mouth and keep saying thank you jesus thank you jesus you have to keep speaking your mouth faith come on thank you jesus i'm completely healed come on brother alfred you have to open your mouth and keep saying thank you jesus i'm completely come on come on faster come on the faster you can walk as you're walking as you're exercising your faith the healing power is flowing inside of you come on thank you jesus i'm healed and restored thank you jesus i'm completely healed just take this back please come on take this back come on take this table back come on thank you jesus i'm completely healed and restored thank you jesus i'm completely healed and restored thank you jesus i'm completely healed okay that's fine that's fine thank you jesus i'm completely healed and restored come on faster come on faster i want you to run come on thank you jesus i'm completely healed and restored thank you jesus thank you jesus okay my brother alfred i want to ask you one thing are you experiencing any pain in the leg no lighter you felt lighter okay. you felt lighter you felt stronger to walk i could see when you when you just started you were you were you were having a lot of thoughts in your mind as you took the third round now you are ready to run now come on move move as, now come on start start being a march pass come on hi, higher up see please don't think think of what the doctor says you believe what the lord has just done for you come on raise your leg like a normal person raise it as high as you can come on thank you jesus come on higher as you lift your leg higher thank you lord thank you lord thank you jesus okay can i just do the finishing can i just do the finishing come on here father you spoke to the woman who has been for 18 long years you said to that woman woman you are loosed of your infirmity so in the name of jesus christ of nazareth my dear brother be no. loosed Come on, be loosed. Yeah, come on, be loosed. Be loosed. Yes, yes. Come on, up down. Come on, you you do it. You do it. Come on, be loosed. Yes, be loosed. Yes. Yeah, come on, come on, be loosed. Yeah, yeah. That's it. See, come on. Who says no? The Lord's power is flowing. Come on. Yeah. For my from out, you smile now. Come on, smile. Yeah. Where is the pain now? First shot was the pain. Now you are going higher. Come on, now do yourself now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, come on. I want you to bend your knees now. Come on, do whatever you could not do. All the all the all the bearings. Come on, hold your hold your hand. Come on, up down up down full full speed up. Yeah, higher, higher. Come on. Yes. Come on. Keep saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, close your eyes. Loving Father. you are faithful you are always faithful to your word and so right now in the name of jesus according to your word in psalm in hebrews 114 your word says that angels are ministering spirits sent to minister to those who are to inherit salvation so in the name of jesus by the power of the holy spirit angels go now and recreate every part of my brother's body especially those joints especially those parts of the knee the knee caps angels go now and bring forth brand new knee caps brand new joints brand new tissues brand new muscles and ligaments brand new nerves in the name of jesus by the power of the holy spirit right now angels are operating you oh thank you holy spirit thank you holy spirit you are so good you are so faithful you are always faithful when we speak your word so right now by the power of the holy spirit every part of my brother's joints which have been tightened which have been unused which have been affected i command them to be loosed relaxed and released right now by the power of the holy spirit 
And as all these things are happening right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, as angels are replacing all these damaged parts with brand new parts, thank you, Holy Spirit, that my brother's pain has been uprooted from the root. Every pain in his body has been uprooted from the root in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for carrying out this quick surgery, for carrying out this quick operation, for setting my brother Alfred completely free. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, much like a soldier, come on now, every pain in your body is all sorted out, fixed from the root. Come on, faster. Come on, whatever you could not do. Come on. When the Holy Spirit operates, he, he does a better job than doctors can do. Come on, faster. Come on. Where is the pain? Where is the pain in your body? Come on, first tell me, where is the pain? No pain. There is no pain. Now, if there is no pain, what stops you from running? Come on, let's go. Fear. Don't have fear. You, the Lord is holding you. He's with you. Come on, march like a soldier. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Look at that. Why you have fear? The Lord is holding you. Now look at the speed. Look at the speed now. Come on. Now, now little jog. Little jog. Come on. Come on, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shall we give the Lord a round of applause for his faithfulness? When he started walking, he had pain. He could not even lift his leg, right? If he was walking, he was walking with so much of fear. Now, did you see the last walk, the last catwalk that he did? Did you see the last catwalk that he did? What was the last catwalk that my brother, uh, brother Alfred did? If not, if not, if not for the shoes he's wearing and not for the carpet, he would be probably jogging, jogging on this place. Amen. Let's give the round of law applause for the Lord for his faithfulness. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, my sister Nora, do you ever think in your life? That what the doctors would do at NHS, you could sit here right in the house and perform an operation on your husband. Did you ever think like that? You always prayed. Listen, you always prayed. And the word of God says, don't pray for the sick. Because the word of God says, heal the sick. When people are sick, what are we doing? Don't worry, I'll pray for you. Nicely, I'll pray for you. Correct? But are you supposed to pray for the sick? Or are you supposed to heal the sick? When Jesus and somebody, when Jesus' mother, uh, Peter's mother-in-law was not well, did Jesus say, don't worry, Peter, we'll pray, make a prayer for you. So let's, let's make prayer. Lord, he, did he say that? He went to Peter's mother-in-law, caught her by the hand. As soon as he touched her, the fever left. There were times he spoke the word and he cast out the devil, right? In the same way, you and I, when we believe in Jesus, we'll be able to do the same thing that Jesus did. And that's exactly what happened. Now, what you saw, what happened to him, has given you the confidence not only to pray for him, but to pray for anybody else. All you need to know is the word. You know the word, you open your mouth, lay your hands, and boom, you see the glory. Is healing a big deal? Is it only for a few, or is it for all those who believe? And what is the meaning of believe? My response to the message. Because the word of God says, believers shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Let's go a little further. Come on, let's sit down. Let's sit down. Let's, let's, let's continue. So basically, our conscience must be clear. Uh, our thoughts, deep thoughts. See, we not, need not to have knowledge of the word. You should not have any doubt. You should have no doubt. Maybe the mind there'll be a doubt, but don't doubt the word. Never doubt the word, because if Jesus said in His word, "Believers shall lay hands on the sick," you simply lay your hands and speak to the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. Don't speak in the name of Vincent or in the name of Alfred or in the name of you know probably. Uh, some some person, you speak it in his name because of what Jesus did. What is the meaning of when we pray in the name of Jesus? It means because of what Jesus has done. Basically, strong faith. Yes, you are going to do it. He's already done it. I'm only tapping into it and I'm only receiving. See, see my brother Alfred. Have a seat. Have a seat, please. Say, for example, on this table, there is a buffet. There's a buffet, correct? Now, when there's a buffet, and everybody is helping themselves. You're sitting in one corner. You go into a wedding and there's a buffet. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Will food come into your mouth? People have taken the, the, the buffet has been closed. You're still in the corner. I'm hungry. Will food come to you? No. But if you want food, what will you do? Go to the table, take a plate, help yourself. And you're eating the food. In the same way, 
when I understand that the buffet has already been laid by Jesus, he has put prosperity, he has put, pros he has put healing, he has put everything and he's laid it because he's finished it on the cross. I simply go to the table, help myself and receive it without any effort because of what he did, not because of what I do. Are you understanding? Most of the time we are taught what? We have to pray, we have to fast, we have to do nine novenas, we have to do 10, 15 decades of the rosary, do 20 rosaries, do this, this, this. But once you understand that he has done everything for you and me on the cross, all that I need to do is simply help myself because I understand what he has done and receive it as my birthright because God loves me so much. Is that right? Is that right, brother? And how long did it take? Right now, here in this place, angels were around you. Angels were operating you. Imagine you go to a, to, a, to a hospital. First and foremost, they'll give you local anesthesia. Then they'll give you a general maybe. Then they will close it. Nobody will see you on the screen. Right now, when your surgery was done, everybody is watching you being operated. Wasn't that wonderful? Because we've been waiting three years. For the knee operation, ligament is gone. And today, ligaments, cartilages, joints, when, uh, all the this thing has already been fi fixed by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit. And what a coincidence! Tomorrow I have to go for a CT scan. The same problem. So when you go to the CT scan, they'll be saying, "Where did you go?" <laughs> <laughs> you just tell them you went to Doctor Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's all being recorded here, so you can listen to it again. But we'll give you the prayer as well. No problem. I know. I, I saw you struggling to get up. Now, now, now get up. It's just because you're not having the practice. Now, now did you get any pain? No pain, but struggle to get up. Yeah, so the more you begin to tell yourself that you are perfectly well, you will just get up because you are still thinking. Oh, yeah. The mind is still saying, I'm a... Yeah, so the moment you begin to practice yourself, just like act like normal and act over heal, you will get up from anywhere. So just sit on the chair, get up, practice. You will find that you will be getting up like a 16-year-old. Like, like, like yeah, there's nothing wrong with you. Amen? Praise God. So, let's continue. Let's continue. Okay. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 16. Uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17. Welcome. Both of you, welcome, please. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17. Matthew chapter 8, verse number 17. What does it say? Can we read Matthew chapter 8 verse 17? That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. See what is this verse saying? What was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah 700 years before the Messiah could come? Jesus fulfilled it on the cross of Calvary. You know, before I came to the word of God, before I understood the word of God, I thought Jesus came to the earth. He went to the cross for our sins. That's all. He took our sins, took our sins, took our sins. But apart from that, I'm supposed to carry my cross. So what am I supposed to carry? My aches and pains. I'm supposed to carry no money in my pocket. I'm supposed to carry myself. Uh, I'm supposed to be miserable. If you look at all the saints that you have, do you see any smiling face? You look at Jesus in the, in, the, in the divine mercy. You look at anyone in the church. So you, all of us are accustomed to looking at everything. The more you are like them, you feel you are more religious. You don't, you don't realize that you're supposed to be joyful. So that's why people don't want to go to church. They go to the cinema because they at least they can laugh. But in the church, and anybody laughs, they think they'll turn around and say, and then you're also being very serious. Right? Yes. Come on. <laughs> that's what that's what we do in church. Yeah. We look like this. Somebody, Everybody. <laughs> Some, somebody cracks a joke or somebody is smiling. Even we'll turn around, all 10 people will turn around. That person will say, 
are these people in the church or are they in a, in a mortuary? <laughs> Is there any difference between going to a funeral and going to church? You see everyone. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Finish. That's all. You should be joyful. When you give peace to them. Not even a smile. Nowadays, these are you. <laughs> they do in India. No time. And when you're giving peace, is even if you have to shake hand, even if somebody puts their hand on. I, I actually, we had, I had this situation in India. You go and say, hello, happy, nice to meet you. No, because of COVID. Yeah, everybody's afraid. I would say, if you got COVID, I'll give you a hug because the COVID is going to die yeah. when I give you a hug. <laughs> Sorry? No, I'm scared of COVID. He just told you he gave you speech. I just told you that if you have COVID, I'll let you hug you. Don't worry about me. You got COVID anyway. You don't want to give me, no? So if you got COVID, I'll give you a hug because the moment I give you the hug, that COVID will be dead. Do you believe? Look at what the verse is saying. I'm just talking about that verse. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Am I, when I give you a hug, am I, am I the one who's taking your COVID? The Christ in me is the one hugging you. And he has already taken your sickness. If you believe that one hug, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll give you a real story. Last year, 2021, January, my own brother, along with his own family, they came to our house. And it was COVID at its maximum. Okay? His two sons, his wife, and, and my brother. And when he comes in, he's coughing. He's all hot. He's really having a fever. He's not talking much. He doesn't want to eat because we wanted to meet during Christmas. time. And all of us were there. All five of us. My three children. Aaron was there. My, Melanie was there. And we were all there. And he's very quiet. And I said to him, you're feeling okay? Okay. Okay. I'm fine. Okay. Anyway, we had our dinner. We, we spent time hugging, playing. And he was not much active. Anyway. Next day, he goes to do a COVID test. After he does the COVID test, what happens? He is... Positive. He's positive. Okay. He's positive. His wife is positive. One son is positive. One son is not yet positive. By the end of three, four days, now the whole family is positive. Now who's calling us every day? They're not calling him. They're calling us. Why are they calling us? For quarantine. They are concerned about us because we were with a COVID person. If the moment you are with somebody who's COVID, now everybody is going to panic, you know. Nobody wants to see you. Now they keep calling us first day. How are you all? All fine. Call second day. We are all fine. Third day, we are all fine. One week they call us. By fourth day, these are gone cases. They don't even call us anymore. <laughs> now my question to you is, if you hear the TV news and newspaper, please stay away from COVID patients. Because in my family, we believe that if anybody of COVID comes, in fact, they come with masks. And I said, if, you, if you're happy here, you can come without your mask. No problem. You can come into this house absolutely free. Don't have fear of COVID because greater is he that is in me than COVID that is in the world. No, no, I just gave you the scripture. The scripture says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So who's in the world? COVID-19. Monkey chrome. Oh, monkey or Johnny or camel chrome. I don't know what chrome these, these days are. In these days, they have come out with all names. So they have, now they have left the names of Johnny and Tommy. Now they've gone to camels and monkeys. Correct? Monkey pox. You're right. So, so they will come out with a new name. They will come tomorrow with, anyway, with camel, camel pox. Or they'll come out with a foxy, uh, foxy pox. I don't know what name they will come out. But when you know that the one in you is greater than uh, Johnny and Tommy and whatever chrome they have, are you going to be afraid of it? But the moment you are afraid of it, what are you going to do? Don't come near me. Yeah. Put mask, put mask on. I'm not saying you don't put mask on. Respect the other. If the other person is not in faith, put your mask on for their sake. But in your in your heart, have no fear of Johnny Chrome or Tommy Chrome or any virus because that virus cannot touch you. The moment it comes near you, it has to die. And that's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. I said, that's, thank you Holy Spirit, that's the difference between a believer and a non-believer. A believer is the one who knows who he has. A non-believer or an unbeliever is the one who is more focused on the virus and what the world is saying. If I know I believe to belong to Jesus, 
then what is going to happen? I am going to believe who is inside of me. Right or wrong? Is it going to happen in one day just because you came and heard me today? After you go out of this place, what a joker. I think we made the biggest mistake of coming to and listening to such a joker. Every whole world is talking about Johnny and Tommy. And this man is saying, I'll give you a hug and nothing will happen to you. The point is, you have to believe it. When you believe it, your response will show. When you respond, your faith will, will put a will put a uh, we'll put an enclosure around you. Angels will come around you and just blow away the virus. But you have to believe those angels around you. Can you see those angels? No. But are they there? They are. Because you're not seeing it with your physical eyes. You are seeing it through the word of God. God has put his angels in charge of us. That's what it says in Psalm 91 verse number 11. See, look at what Psalm 91 verse number 11 says. Can you put that, Aaron, please? Psalm 91 verse number 11. He has put his angels in charge of us. Look at our two angels, Raphael and Gabriel are here. I'm just looking at them. Just, they're just looking here. These are angels. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing these little angels. Even though they cannot understand, the spirits are listening to the word. So what does it say in Psalm 91 verse number 11? What does he say? What does he say? For he, but this was given in the Old Testament scripture. So today, if you are praying it in the New Testament, how would we pray this? How would we pray this scripture? For he has given his angels charge over thee to keep thee. In all thy ways. Make it personal. See, make it personal. For he has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways. See, remember, when you're praying the Old Testament, before, from right from Genesis to Malachi, is Old Testament. From Matthew to Revelation, the New Testament. So when you take the Old Testament scriptures, you will see that everything, God will heal. God will bless. God will do this. But when you come to the New Testament, everything is already finished, done. So when you are looking at Old Testament scriptures, pray like a New Testament saint. So when you read the scripture, you say, he has given his angels charge over me to keep me in all, to keep me in all his ways, to protect me in all his ways. This is my God. He has put his angels, not just my guardian angel, not just one able gave. He has put his legions of angels around me. Do I believe those angels? Can I see them? No, but they are there. And they will only work for me when I believe and I open my mouth and speak the word. Are you with me? So let's go back to Matthew chapter uh, 8 verse 17. Matthew chapter 8 verse 17. Let's go there. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. That means if there is any sickness that can be named, whether it's cancer, COVID-19, uh, arthritis, diabetes, name it, name any sickness. Jesus already took it on the cross how many years ago? 2,000 years ago on that cross. So he never just took only our sins, but he took our sicknesses, he took our curses, he took our punishment, he took our poverty, he took our shame, he took our rejection, and he took what was due by divine justice. Seven exchanges took place on the cross. So if he has already taken it for you and me on the cross, I simply need to believe it. If I believe it, what is going to, what is going to be my response to him? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you have redeemed me from the curse of the law. Thank you that you have taken my poverty. Thank you that you took away all my sickness. Now, you know, my dear sister and brothers, Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, I have seen with this one verse, hundreds and hundreds of people getting healed. I'm not just talking about 10, 12 people, hundreds and hundreds of people getting healed with just Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. Why? When somebody understands what Jesus did for them on the cross, they don't even need to pray. 
they simply need to believe it, open their mouth and say, thank you, Jesus, and get completely. You know, uh, just about how many months ago for, for, for Rocky? About uh, uh, three months ago. You know, when I had this live preaching in, in a chapel in St. Joseph in Goa, there was this lady who came over to my live preaching and she was a Hindu. She, her name is Rocky and she, she had a sickness called lupus. I don't know if you heard of a sickness called lupus. It destroys your immune system. There is no cure for that. They went to Google, they went to, and that immune system is so bad that even you would take brufane, painkillers, everything, that, pain, that she had reached a stage where the painkillers were not working on her. She wanted to commit suicide. She was so much in pain. So she was just lying in the bed. Somebody gave her my number. So we told her, see, I'm having a, a retreat. I'm having a session tomorrow. Can you please come? She said, I can't even get up from the bed. So I told her, her husband, I said, make it a point to come and bring a long story short. She came. She was carried and brought to the chapel. As she began to hear this word, I changed the teaching that they were only for her in Matthew chapter 8, verse 17. This girl, this lady of 32 years old, having a child of over nine years, she began to believe what Jesus did for her. Because all this time she was praying because she doesn't know the word. She's, she, she's not a believer. But as she began to believe what Jesus had done for her on the cross, and she understood that, I explained to her, I said, if Jesus has taken even your lupus on the cross, what will you say to him if, I, if somebody has already done it? She said, thank you. You know, moment she said, thank you. All we did was I got somebody to pray over her. We just prayed the word. She got up and she left that place completely healed. Absolutely free from pain. And weeks later, in, on that meeting, she accepted Christ. She and her family accepted Christ because none of her gods or whatever she was praying could ever give her relief. And she accepted Christ. And a few weeks later, she even put her testimony on the YouTube. When she came there, a 33-year-old person looked like someone who was about 80, 90 years old. Many had to help her to bring her with her husband inside the church. When she walked out, she walked out absolutely healed. When we saw on the YouTube, we couldn't believe this lady who's 33 years old. When she was looking like 80, she looked like, you know, like a teenager. She looked so absolutely healed because of this scripture. Why? That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bore our diseases. If he took all our sicknesses, do we need to pray to him to heal us anymore? No. So then, if I don't need to pray, then what am I going to do? So that means others are sick, I have to pray for them to be healed. Is, is that what I'm going to do? What is the meaning of prayer? Okay, what is the meaning of prayer? It's a dialogue, correct? Yeah. Now, most of the time our prayer is what? <laughs> give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. Yeah. True. <laughs> Very true. Isn't it? You could have the faith, yes. Because most of our prayers are what? Give me. Give me this, give me that. Correct? Come on. Yeah. Let's, let's be frank. Most of our prayers is from the, from the moment we say Father, Son, till the end, in Jesus' name. I know, Lord, you're, and then, you know, sometimes our prayer is what? Is reporting to God. He's completely missing. He's got the whole world in his hands, right? He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole, and because he's got the whole world, he's got so many things to remember. We have to update his computer. So we have to tell him, you know, my husband, you know, that wife of mine, and the children, those neighbors, and those priests. No, nowadays, you know, there's so much of, and now, like these old marriages and we are just reporting to an uninformed God and that's our prayer so after about 15 minutes of informing a misinformed God and then we say Lord please do something about it in Jesus name Amen Father Son the Holy Spirit finished our prayer that's our prayer right or wrong but if you understand what he has already done right from the beginning to the end thank you Lord for this day thank you Lord that even though little aches and they even though this wife has got white hair, even the husband is still moving, still moving. He is still moving. Right? Where did my sister go? Well, I said moving and she moved away. Yeah. Huh? Moving. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. So my point is, my dear sister and brothers, what I wanted to say to you all is, when we begin to understand one thing, that it's already done. It's already finished on the cross. He already, you know, already took our infirmities. He bore all our diseases. That means 
if today a scientist come and give you a name of a sickness you know you just have to laugh and say my jesus took it 2000 years ago they'll come out with another virus after 6 months and let's say now they have come the latest one is your uh, monkey pox right just wait for another 3 months they were these great you know geniuses they'll come out with another one camel pox and everyone will think what brilliant guys these are they've come out with another thing they laugh at that thing and at that camel pox and say my jesus i knew this even to before they could tell my jesus already took it away but if you believe what they have just discovered now for example do you think that einstein or not for einstein edison or they found the phone or this fellow found electricity edison found the bulb and did he discover it was there from the foundations of the earth it's only that somebody discovered it now this mobile phone was there right from creation but the problem is nobody knew how to discover this phone you mean to say this all these microwaves and these wave signals and all these were not there before it's only that they discovered how to use this now but from creation god had put that potential in, in man in the same way 2000 years ago jesus came to the earth and he has finished everything when i believe what he did i simply receive it by faith and what is faith believing what jesus has done in his word so when i know what he has done with thanksgiving i am able to appropriate i am able to receive it i understand but when somebody is struggling a long time you say why is not getting cured why how do i go from there okay see brother if i if i am doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result isn't this what people do in a mental hospital <laughs> come on come on you are doing the same thing and expecting a different result don't do people do in that in the mental hospital if you change your way you will find a different result every day you go to the thing same 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 dialogue same reporting change the reporting do the reporting according to the word now what we did today we changed the way did we say come on lord let's all come on i would have told you all of you come on all of us let's sit together and let's storm the heaven let's see how this fellow is now he's the day two have been praying for his healing and tomorrow today now we are all of us now we'll see how god will not able to hear let's put pressure on heaven did we do that we never put any pressure we simply believed what jesus did and next moment we saw the healing what is the same that word from the bible you're going to give it i want to say it just say it every time that word is said thank you that. thank you jesus that i am completely healed and restored you take 1 peter to 24 the word of god says by his stripes and wounds we have been healed so you keep saying thank you jesus by your stripes and wounds i am completely healed and restored yeah just keep saying see when you say it you are believing it that you are already well now you see a pain in your leg when the prayer has been made even though the pain is there i don't tolerate the pain i know it's already done and because i believe i'm already healed i'm marching and as i'm marching the healing is taking place now it's manifesting he said lord i'm here lord i'm here exactly exactly so the moment see in god's kingdom it's not that i receive first and then i believe in god's kingdom i believe first then i receive see if somebody is having a problem in some pain they'll go to the doctor the doctor will give an injection he'll do one surgery then the pain will go then the person how are you feeling father doctor i'm feeling fine but there's little pain of the surgery and all <laughs> then afterwards when his pain is gone ah oh, now i'm fine really good doctor huh? very good good doctor because doctor has healed it but in god's kingdom it's the other way first i believe what he did for me and when i believe it the the manifestation begins to take place so in god's kingdom believing comes first manifestation comes later now my brother when uh, um um alfred when he came here he says i told him is god going to heal you no no he will heal me because he was under the impression just like in he goes to hospital first the pain should go then he will believe yes now it is gone now i believe no what the word of god says as says that you already heal when i believe what he has done for me now the manifestation takes place that's what i want what i believe what you have done for me that's what correct that's what i want to praise god want. praise god praise god so you understood now so remember when you come to god's word when you come to the kingdom of god when we come as children of god we don't wait for the manifestation to take place we first believe what jesus has done manifestation will follow amen okay so we were we were on this all this trial we were talking about healing let's go back to our original uh, chapter that is in um, uh, what is that chapter was it uh, mark chapter 
verse number 16. Mark chapter 16. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Verse number 15. Sorry. Verse number 15. So uh, before that, we, 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 he, 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 uh, in verse number 14, he, he upbraided them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed them which had seen him after he had risen from the dead. Correct? Now verse number 15. What does he say in verse number 15? Let's read that. And he said unto them, Go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay. Go on. He that believes and is baptized, shall be saved. But he that believes not, shall be damned. Go on, go on, go on. Really. Up to 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So, what is this saying? Look at what he says in verse number 15. He said unto them, Go you all into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Did he say to preach only to the church? To whom he said to preach? To every creature, to every human being. That means you and I are called to go and preach the gospel, share the gospel to the ends of the earth. Did he say this only to a few people? To whom did he say? To all those who believe, right? If you believe the gospel, okay, let me, let me put it differently. Have you ever seen two people who are courting before they get married? They found each other. Now, when, when their friends say, hey, how is she, man? Are she's so good and all that. When you ask the boy, he's only dreaming. They will find some excuse to meet in the coffee shop. All the time they are in dreamland. They are always communicating. Then they will talk to their friends. Oh, she's good. Oh, he's good. Oh, he does this. He does that. We are always talking to one another about our partner. Is that right? When you have a relationship with the Lord, whom are you going to talk about? The weather. How about how, what are the statistics of COVID-19? You are going to tell what NHS is saying, what he said, what she said. Is that right? <laughs> Come on. When you have a relationship with the Lord, what will your talk be? About his love for you. What he has done in your life, correct? But most of the time, what is our talk? Hey, now please don't go out, huh? Now the cases are increasing. And now, you know, you're three stay inside. Please wear your mask. All these, these killers are saying, don't wear masks. It's spreading now. And, you know, we don't want to have another issue. Please, please, please. And please, you know, now, now, now in the supermarket, you'll find that all these uh, lotions and all these uh, hand washes, will the sales will increase. Do you know that? So that gives you an opportunity to do business now with hand washes and slow. You can you can sell also these you know, tissues and you can open a small little shop and sell them half the price. <laughs> Praise God. So all these things will happen when, when you begin to take your eyes off Jesus and start focusing what the world is saying. Why is the world saying like that? Because they don't know the truth. They don't know what Jesus has done. But you and I know what Jesus has done. So we should be the bearers of good news. That's why he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel to the, all the nations. Go to all the world and preach the gospel to all the nations. So when you and I are going out to all the world and preaching the gospel to all the nations, what is the meaning of gospel? Good news. But you know what, Sister Noura? It's not even good news. It is too good to be true news. The gospel is not only good news. Many times people say, the gospel is good news. But I'll tell you what, the gospel is too good to be true news. Why you know it is too good to be true news? Because you say to yourself, Are, 
all these years I've been suffering. Not, not forget an example, my brother Alfred. He is going for NHS, not getting appointment. He has to go for CT scan. He has to go for BT scan. He has to go to KT scan. All scans he has to go through. And now he basically in about a few minutes, he understands the word and everything goes fine. Now, if he wanted water to give to those little boys, he would have said, Nura, can you please get water? Now, he doesn't want to ask you. He gets up, goes, brings water and comes. Because now he knows he's healed. Brother, right or wrong? When I came in, he was like, you know, very quiet and oh, what are we going to have today? No smile on his face. He was looking like very stern. Now he's not stopped smiling only. What are we going to discuss? Now? What are we going to discuss? I mean, what, I mean, you call this guy and look at them, you know, what this joker is going to tell us what I already know. I mean, what is he going to say more than I already know? I mean, I have to go to CT scan and I have to go to NHS. I have to go for BT scan. All these scans are done. And maybe eventually they'll cut me and they'll remove some parts and hopefully I'll be well. Now when he sees himself getting well, now he doesn't stop getting up only. <laughs> Amen? Now that's why the gospel is too good to be true news. Is that right? See, most of the time, what is our situation? Our situation is God will do something. But when you understand the gospel, remember, God will not do anything for you and me because whatever he had to do for you and me, he has already done. Therefore, you and I should not be looking to heaven, but heaven is looking to you and me to believe what his son has done and receive what he has finished on the cross for you and me. Did you get that message right there? That is the gospel. The gospel is... Not that you do novenas and go for masses and, and keep those souls in purgatory quiet and, you know, keep somebody, everybody at bay and then finally you get a miracle. You believe what Jesus has done and when you believe what Jesus has done and you respond to his word. Now, I, I imagine I call Brother Alfredo today. Okay, I called him. No, no, I want to say that. You just, if you want to pray, you pray. He gets up, he stands there and I'm watching him. You know? Listen, to me, I'm, I'm, believe me, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. When he came here, he could have said, why did you call me all this time? You could have called me just when you had to pray. Why you made me to stand for five minutes here? He could have been, you know, there. But he was, list he was standing here. Then I called you. Then afterwards, I told him, come on, march. He could have said to him, oh, I'll sit there. No problem. You made me stand now for five minutes. But he decided to march. Now I'm telling him to go faster. Then I'm telling him to go. He's simply doing what the word of God is saying. That was his faith. And the moment he operated in faith, the power of God took over and completely set him free. Are you understanding? Most of the time, we are looking to heaven. That's how we have been taught. We are looking to heaven that some help will come from heaven. Those things were Old Testament. I look up to the heaven. Where will my help come from? Will come from the Lord of heaven and earth. That was Old Testament. But the Lord from heaven and earth came down to the earth, finished everything that you and I required, and he has put the buffet for you and me to enjoy. And that is the gospel. Too good to be true news. Okay? Let's go to verse number 16. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believes not shall be damned. Listen to this very carefully. The word of God says in verse number 16, he that, he that, we know what has been the meaning of word believes, right? What is the meaning of believes? My response to the message. My response to his word. Only when I respond to his word, that's the time I'm going to be saved. If I don't believe his message, I can go to church every day. I can pray my rosary every day. I can do all the novenas. I can do all the spiritual exercises. But if I do it like a breakfast, lunch, dinner and an activity, but I really don't believe the word, do you think that one day I will make it to heaven? So if I don't do the word, I go to, where do I go? Look at the next line. I'm not saying that. But he that believes not shall be damned. See, if we really believe God's word is truth, then heaven and earth is right here now. See, most of the time people believe what? Now we are suffering. Now we are having this sickness. Now when we die, as long as we went to church and we did everything, 
when we die we'll all go to be with the lord at least even we, even if we are not going to the lord at least people on earth will say that we went to the lord because they say coming home coming home <laughs> correct and yet they will pray for your soul also but the bottom line is you will know whether you are in heaven or in hell you will know when you are in heaven or in hell not when you die right now it's strong word condemned correct is very strong word these are words of jesus he's saying he that believes and is baptized so is it important only to be baptized or it is important to believe as well only those who believe and are baptized will be saved those who do not believe shall be condemned for there's no second chance there today when you are on this planet earth there are umpteen chances as long as you wake up every morning because the word of god says in lamentation 323 his mercy is new every morning his compassion is new every morning so you are getting umpteen chances every new morning but the day you stop breathing and you have never believed the word do you think you got another chance finish you are damned for all eternity so if i believe the word i know that i'm already in heaven i'm already having a relationship with my god and how will i know because i have a desire to obey his word every day i may not do everything perfectly i will fail sometimes but praise god the lord will say take the test my son again take the test again my daughter no problem i am not going to condemn you i am not going to disqualify you take the test again but if you are not going to look at the word you are not going to believe the word you are simply going to do religion you are simply going to do ritual you are simply going to do your you know your your thing everything but everybody does but you don't believe the word the word of god says you will be condemned you will be damned for all eternity now look at this at verse number 17 and 18 i want every one of you to pay full attention to verse 17 and 18 and these signs shall follow them that believe these signs shall follow them that believe has any of you gone out in the sun surely you what a question to ask when you go out in the sun do you have your shadow yeah. can you tell your shadow please i don't want you to come with me stay where you are don't come with me can you tell your shadow can you tell your shadow okay when you stand in the light forget about the sun say in the night you put on this light will you have a shadow when you stand in the light will your shadow be there so a shadow will follow you not, not in the dark i'm saying in the light when you stand in the light your shadow will be there correct so when you walk your shadow will follow you correct right or wrong in the same way when you believe these signs like a shadow will follow you let me say this again when you and i are standing in the light you will always have a shadow right or wrong you cannot say shadow don't come with me in the same way when i stand in the light of the gospel when i start when, what is the meaning of stand in the light of the gospel i am believing when i believe like my shadow signs and wonders are going to follow me look at what he says and these signs shall follow them that believe not everybody remember only those who believe shall be saved those who don't believe shall be condemned so if i want to know that i'm really believe and i'm really saved signs and wonders shall follow me in my name shall they cast out devils they will speak with new tongues they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay hands on the sick sister noora welcome to the family and they shall recover do you understand what i said listen all these signs shall only follow those who believe now i'll give you a testimony okay a few years ago that is about before we came from the pending we were in pune and we used to handle the youth there in in pune 
so happened that one of our youth was possessed by a demon. And he is only about 16, 17, but he was a hefty guy. And because he was, his eyes were turning and he was acting in a most funny way, the other youth just started pounding on him and started putting him down on the ground. And he was just with that super power that he had, but just knocked them off. So I wasn't there with our youth at that time because they were all preparing for their, for their, um, you know, for their, um, for their thing, because we were going to have a conference in Goa in, in 15 days time. So my son was there practicing with them. He was also in the youth. So they called me from the house and they said, dad, can you please come? One of our youth, what is his name? Leander. So we, they said, you know, Leander is possessed. His eyes are all turning and nobody's able to control him. Please come. So immediately this boys, when I go in there, all of them had virtually, they were suffocating him and they had put their pressure on him and they were doing that repeatedly just to keep him down because he was boisterous. I just told him, get up, told them all, go into the other room. I went up to him and, you know, immediately commanded that spirit to get out. And within about two, three minutes, that boy was completely free. And as soon as he was free, these youth, they went outside because for about half an hour, 45 minutes, they were using physical power, physical muscle to do that. I did not even touch the fellow. I did not even touch him. I just simply spoke to that demon that was there and I commanded him. Now, I did not know that this boy was demon possessed or that he was having this problem because that particular evening when his mother called us because we were in charge of the youth, she said, thank you so much for praying for Leander because he's been getting this sort of, you know, these violent uh, attacks and he has been acting this way. Now, three years now, he's completely free, no more issues. Now, I'm asking you, and this is one incident. There was another incident where another lady in, 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 um, uh, in Pune, I was called to somebody's house and this lady was actually having a problem because she had a physical problem in her, in her hip. She had a rod put in her hip because she was taking her grandson. She was about 65, 70 and she was having a rod put into her hip because when she was taking her grandson to the, uh, to the school, the grandson was just about to run on the road and as she went to catch him, she fell down and she broke her hip bone. So almost two, three years now, she had a rod put there. So she was basically walking this way. Because, you know, when the rod is there, you cannot bend. Correct? So they called me over to pray. And I shared the word, just what I'm sharing right now. And then I began to lay hands on her to pray. As soon as I started praying over her, this lady slid down the sofa. And she started going around the hall like a top. And like, like, a, like, a, like a serpent. And she was speaking obscene things, something which I could not understand. And the family just left her and left me with her. So for almost 35, 40 minutes, I am commanding that spirit to get up and nothing is happening. Okay. Nothing is happening to that lady. And she's just going like this, like a -da 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 on the ground, just on the, on the floor. And in that full semicircle, she's just going around and she's looking miserable and all that. After about 35, 40 minutes, the husband comes to me and he says, you know, brother, I forgot to tell you one thing. 15 years ago, my wife had some problem and I took her to a Muslim Baba. And he gave her some powders to have and something to eat and all that. And she felt a little bit nice after that. But after these, after that situation, she has been manifesting sometimes. Something her eyes turned sometime and we did not want to tell you. And we, not, we only wanted her to get physically ill. But we never told you about this being demon possessed. When you go to the demon's den, either the demon is going to come or the demons are going to come inside with you. <laughs> I'm asking you, if you go to the demon's den, are you going to get demons out or are demons to enter into you? So when the husband told me, I said, brother, thank you very much. The moment I realized that she had gone into the demon's den, she just spoke to the spirits and she was completely set free. And the Holy Spirit reminded me and he says, that's only 80% of the job done. So when she got up and she was in her senses, I made her sit down. And I told the family, and they were in the meantime coming, shall we call the parish priest? Shall we call this priest? Shall we call? I said, don't call anybody. Just don't worry. Everything is fixed right now. We called, a, um, uh, and she came around. We made her sit down. I told the family, get a jug of water and get a bucket. And I said to her, let her drink as much water as possible. I said, now keep the bucket in front of her because she's going to get everything out. And then she started vomiting something green, something blue and pink and some powders and all sorts of things were just piled up into that bucket. And when all that stuff came out, she was completely set free. And another miracle that took place was this lady who had a, who had a rod here, that rod got fused with the bone and now she was bending 
she was twisting and she was doing things like a gymnast completely flexible body because all that monkey thing that she did around for 45 minutes that that bone got completely fused the holy spirit operated her and the rod and the bone got fused and now she had become so flexible now she was doing all like this but she could not walk like this and she was walking and running and it's about 3 and 1/2 years she's perfectly set free so not only was the demon cast out but even that rod that metallic rod which was there got fused with the bone and now it it was able to bend the rod was able to bend because the it was fused with the bone by the holy spirit and she's completely set free isn't that wonderful our god is so good that's why the gospel is not only good news it is too good to be true news too good to be true news you know if you really begin to understand what jesus has done for us on the cross we will never come to the lord like beggars most of the time when we come to the lord we come like beggars lord please do this please heal me you if you are a child if you are if say for example you have your children you 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 had children right would your children come to the house when they came back and go daddy mummy i'll kiss your feet now give me food to eat would they do would you ever do that by the time they came to the door you would go to the bus stop come on darling wash your hands come on eat food no need to kiss hug and all it's ready you would have kept it ready if you and i who are, who are not perfect like god know how to be good, so good to our children do you think our heavenly father all this natak that we do all this drama that we do do you think we need to do it to receive from him come on do we need to do that he is a loving god he is a loving father he sent his son for you and me on the cross to take our place to be our substitute why won't he do everything good for us and because we have not understood the gospel we don't have a practical working knowledge of the word of god we simply come to the lord like beggars we come to the lord as though you know i am nothing i have nothing lord you are everything do something about it if you can do if it's your will please do something god's word is god's will can we ever say these terms like this today if it is god's will i will be well god's will says that he wants you to walk in divine health god's word says that he has already healed you if god's word says that you are already well do you need to ask him to heal you any more all you need to do is simply receive and not only receive healing you are supposed to walk in divine health for the rest of your life when the demons come there in front of you or the sickness comes in front of you give them such a kick that they will not mess around with you anymore but most of the time we are sitting oh covid has come oh something is happening oh this is paining that is paining this is pain when something is paining sell that pain get lost in the name of jesus you have no i have no you have no place in me i belong to christ i have got god inside of me you have no power no place in me you need to be aggressive don't be aggressive to people be aggressive to that pain be aggressive to to the demons most of the time we we take our anger on people you are getting a pain here instead of talking to the enemy and telling him to get lost you are you are finding a easy target your spouse or fighting whoever your neighbor is there right or wrong right okay and then we'll tell other people don't you know i'm getting all this pain what am i to do if you are getting a pain Oh, what was it? I was listening to the sermon, and look, it's the opposite. He's pretending to you. No, am I? Am I? Am I? Am I talking to only one person? Or it's it's all is applicable to all of us. Come on. To all of us. Now my brother Alfred will say. Okay, so far so good. Now, now see, he's now, now, now he's getting. Now this is getting a bit too much. Now, now, now it's time. No, but listen, it's not only applicable to him. It's it's all applicable to each one of us. Is that right? Sometimes we have an issue. Instead of attacking the issue, we are we are trying to release our our frustration on people around us, and that's what happens in in usually the case. When you begin to understand, you got a problem at with your boss at work. The the husband will come home and the wife says. Telling some net what tea? No, I don't want that tea. Why your tea is without sugar? No, 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 no. She doesn't even know what with what mood he's come from work. Okay, right or wrong? The boss has been a jerk there. You also act some more because you won't tell the boss. No, you shut your mouth there. You'll tell your wife to shut up. So the boss will say, okay, okay, okay. 
moment you come back home now you have to now solve it's all pent up is now first target is poor wife she's sitting there made nice coffee made nice uh, pakoras and samosas and so, i don't want your samosa bagara i don't know i don't know i think so what to do all drama <laughs> Cooking drama. Alfred Rose. Alfred Rose and Rita Rose. Correct. <laughs> doesn't doesn't it happen? But moment such a situation takes place and the boss or somebody has given you a problem, don't bring the bring your office home. Just talk to just talk to your boss. Okay, listen, boss. Are you in a good? Uh, is it okay? Time to talk. Talk. To you. Listen. Da, 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 da. If you believe that what he is saying is true, just change and just start doing the job. but don't carry office and frustrations back home because when you bring your frustrations at home everything is going to be absolutely a mess right doesn't it happen it happens talk about students you talk to them and all come on they don't come on son come on dot no he's not, he's he's okay to some of them you all <laughs> i we don't want to eat today ah we had a bad day oh now you had a bad day i know but doesn't mean that we we also have supposed to have a bad day with you right correct so the point is at the end of the day we have to attack the situation attack our circumstances with the power that we have is the word we are not supposed to attack people our target is never people but most of the time what are we doing we are taking our frustrations on people but when you know who you are and you know whom you have and you have that authority in Christ because you believe in the word you simply open your mouth and speak to that to that sickness see jesus never said that you know you have to speak to your uh, speak about your mountains he never said you should speak about your sickness you have to speak to the mountain in mark chapter 16 verse 6 uh, mark chapter 16 verses number it's this was uh, mark chapter 11 sorry <laughs> Mark chapter eleven verses twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five. Can we go there, please, for a moment? Because I'm going to I'm going to link this verse to the to that verse. Mark chapter eleven verses twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five. Mark chapter eleven verses twenty three, twenty four, and twenty five. Look at what Jesus says. Verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says blank check but brother how can you start speaking to your mountain if all these years we have been speaking about our mountain we need to change our mindset every word that i speak uh, that's what I, if i had a little bit more time can we go right up to about 7 o'clock yeah. yeah okay okay because you know what i wanted to share i'm going to go in the second part about how our words matter because you know what if god created us in his own image and likeness listen to this god how did god create everything how did god create everything whatever you see right now the moon the stars how did he create it by words god spoke let there be light god spoke let there be the sun god spoke let there be the moon god spoke let there so everything that god created he created by the word of his mouth right and then you go to genesis chapter 1 verse 27 it says he created man his highest creation in his own image and in his own likeness which means that you and i have got the power with our words to create like god Are you with me? Can you imagine the responsibility that we have? As He is God in heaven, He made you the the Lord on this earth. But what did man do? The tree that he was not supposed to eat the fruit from. I mean, from the fruit that he was not supposed to eat from the tree, he went and ate the fruit, and he blew up his own thing, and got cut off from God. And when he got cut off from God, God did not want us to be lost. He sent His Son as man, because remember. god cannot interfere you see sometimes we don't realize this whole spiritual thing when god said man you are the boss of this earth i will not interfere with the earth i am god in heaven you be the lord on the earth but you have not to eat that fruit but what did man do 
What did Adam and Eve do? They ate the fruit and lost everything, right? Now, when they lost everything, God could not interfere with man. So what did God do? He began to find a way for him to come on this earth. He sent the prophets, he sent Jeremiah, he sent Moses, he sent Abraham, he sent, he sent David, he sent uh, Isaiah, he sent Malachi, he sent John the Baptist. All these people came to prepare the way for Jesus to come. And finally, the Lord came as man. Jesus came as man and he preached the love of God. And then he went and took your place and my place on the cross and he died for us on that cross. And now, because he went and took your place and my place, he has restored back our relationship with God Almighty. Right? So now, when we believe in Jesus, the same authority that we, Jesus has of speaking words, you and I have that same authority when we believe. That's why when Jesus spoke the word, sickness is left. In the same way, when you and I speak, sicknesses have to leave in his name. Don't say in the name of Vincent, get out. Nothing will happen. You'll be knocked off next moment. It will be in the name of Jesus. Can you say in the name of Peter or name of Paul or in, in the name of Jesus? Because he did it for us. Now, the word of God says in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, that means I have to open my mouth. I have to understand that God has given me the authority on earth to speak to my situation, to speak to my circumstances and not to magnify my problem. Supposing, for example, I got a pain in my body, some pain in my body. What is the most natural thing we'll do? Pain, I'm getting pain in my leg. I'm getting pain in my shoulder. I'm getting my pain here. I'm getting a pain there. I'm getting a pain everywhere, right? The word of God says, don't say that I'm getting a pain, but talk to your pain and say, in the name of Jesus, get out right now. Are you with me? Now, my brother, Alfredo, remember one thing. If the pain does come back again, don't you open your mouth and say, oh, it's just temporary. Say, you pain, have you come back again? In the name of Jesus, get out right now. And when you speak to it, that's why, see, what is better to get? Is it easy to get your healing? 100%. What is the challenge? To keep your healing. Because there's a shameless enemy who will come back again. But when you are a, you're a soldier and you speak to the pain and you say, get out, he will stop coming because he knows that he's up against a soldier. But if you are a chicken, ah, oh, pain is going, move, 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 finish. He's going to come and he's going to take your lunch and take your tea and take your dinner also. And you speak. Speak to your problem. Speak to your mountain. And in the name of Jesus, command it to get out. It has to leave. That's exactly what he's saying in Mark chapter 11, verse 23. He says, you have to speak to the mountain. You will receive it. Now, verse number 24. Therefore, I say unto you, that things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. That means when you open your mouth, don't just open your mouth and just utter some prayers and just say, you know, most of the time we, we make some prayers, right? We don't even realize what we have said because it has become a habit for us to say prayers, long prayers. Oh, in the name of Jesus, hail Mary, our oh, father, do lots of prayers. Something, sometimes we are always, we are, some, we are firing some arrows somewhere, some gunshots somewhere. Sometimes it's hitting, sometimes not hitting, but something is happening. Right or wrong? Yeah. But when you are specific to a target, that's your target. Okay, that's the bow there. I'm going to thumb, down, gone, finish, one shot. That's exactly what the Lord is saying. When you have a problem, don't start calling uh, you know, Raphael, Angel, this one, that one. Just talk to the problem and say, you problem, you are illegal because my Jesus has already taken you on the cross. So in the name of Jesus, I'm talking to you. Get out of my, of my life. Get out of my body. Go to the place where you belong to the depths of the ocean and it has to obey you. That's why it says, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you have received it. And my brother Alfred, when he believed it, what, that he received it. What did he do? Okay, I received it. When he received it, what did he do? He got up and he stood up and he started walking. Because he believed what he received. Now, when he believed what he received, what would his response be? 
Thank you, Jesus. Are you with me? If you believe it, you will say, thank you, Jesus. If you don't believe it, no, but I'm still getting pain now. And nothing has happened. There's something has happened, but nothing much has happened. Now, is it going to work? But when you see a little cloud, you are still a little healing started. Now you open your mouth and keep thanking. By the time that little cloud, now the rain clouds are come and the showers of blessings are falling on you and healing is coming into your body. So when you see a little change happening, it's time for you to celebrate. It's time for you to start yelling and shouting and start thanking the Lord. But most of the time you say, no, there is some change. I'm feeling better. But not everything is gone. You want everything to go, just keep thanking the Lord. As you keep thanking the Lord, whatever has started, now it will just flow like an ocean and you'll be completely set free. That's why I liked what Brother Alfred said. What is that scripture you want me to pray all the time with thanksgiving? I understood he got it perfectly. Perfectly he got it. Did you understand my Brother Alfred now? What he was saying? Because of thanksgiving. Okay. Then Mark eleven twenty five. 25. And when you stand praying, Forgive if you ought anything against anyone that your father in heaven will also forgive you. Remember before I prayed with him, I asked him about forgiveness. And he says, I have no issues because he said, he said from his heart, because he said, I, he was sincere. He says, you know, sometimes I get angry. I avoid people. But then he says, I'm ready to make the correction. I'm not going to, I'm going to tell him. So the moment you have a heart that is open, see, God looks at the heart. We are not all perfect people, but your heart condition should be such where you say, when I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Lord, I need you. I need your help. I need your forgiveness. But if you are not ready to acknowledge that you are, a, a, you are Mr. Right all the time, do you think the Lord can help you? He couldn't help the Pharisees. The Pharisees thought that they were Mr. Right all the time. They thought that they prayed, they fasted, they, they prayed five times a week and uh, five times a day. And they thought that they were like Mr. Right. But Jesus could not save them. Now they did everything perfectly right on the outside. But were they saved? No. They were condemned. In the same way, when you and I forgive one another of the wrongs that we have done, God also forgives us. That's why when we pray the Our Father, we say, give us this day our daily bread. Right? Or do we say, give us this day our generational bread? <laughs> huh? <laughs> you ask the ministers in Goa what they will pray. Give us this day our generational bread. Not only for this generation, for the next 10 generations. But they are giving it for their generation. Right? We are praying, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. This is the only place in the New Testament which is conditional. If you want forgiveness, you must forgive the other. If you don't forgive, you, God cannot forgive you and if God doesn't forgive you. You are in your sin. You are going to die. So remember, unforgiveness is a demonic spirit. Are there people going to hurt us every day of our life? If you are at work, in your family, your spouse, your children, your in-laws, your neighbors, are there going to be opportunities for people to forgive, hurt you? Yes, but you are simply supposed to forgive them. That, that's why, brother, that's why, brother, this, this business of hurting, which goes on, will only change when one of the spouses becomes teachable and starts believing the word. Teachable. 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 Okay. One of them should be teachable. See, if one is teachable, she's already in majority. You know why? Because she's going to be with Christ. So anyone with Christ is 100% majority. So there are 100 people and 99 people have made a decision. But one person is with Christ. Who's going to win? That one person. Because he's with the Lord of heaven and he's with the word. Maybe they'll persecute him. They'll say, oh, what do you think, man? Oh, look at us. We are, in, man. we are democracy. We've got 99 people with us. You are going to lose it. In the natural, you're going to think that person is lost. But in terms of the Lord's kingdom, that man is a winner. Are you with me? See, when Jesus goes to the cross, all those people standing, he's hung there. One robber decides, what does it look in the natural? 
that Jesus is already lost. Correct? Come on. In the natural looks, he is lost, right? What happens after three days? This God, because sin could not touch him, he rises and now he is Lord of heaven and earth. When he is Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't, if he speaks one word, will those Pharisees and all those Roman soldiers not turn into ashes? But does he turn them into ashes? Because he is God Almighty. He doesn't think like us. And if, if somebody has done something wrong for us and we hear that something is wrong with them, yeah, it deserves him right because they did wrong. See, God has punished him. Right? Yes, I... Look at our stinking thinking. Somebody has, got, has done something wrong to us. And the moment you hear, you are actually having a feast that day because God has fixed him already. But is that right? God has not fixed him. The devil has actually destroyed his life. God is not fixing anybody. God is merciful. Even if Hitler, even if Hitler, who killed millions of Jews, had to basically, you know, uh, repent and come back to the Lord, God, Jesus would have accepted him because Jesus already paid for his all that sin on the cross. But the question is, did, did Hitler repent? No. Did Judas repent? No. Now, Judas, even though he sold Jesus for 30 silver coins, after Jesus went to the cross, if he had not to commit suicide, he would come to the Lord and say, Lord, Yes, I took 30 silver coins. I made a big blunder. I made a big mistake. But Jesus would have accepted Judas. But Judas went and hung himself. Yeah, the guilt ate him up. The guilt ate him up. But if he had understood that Jesus loves him so much, even though he did something wrong, God's mercy is so great, he would have still... God did not create Judas to go to hell. Judas chose himself to go to hell. So in the same way, nobody is going to hell because God sends him to hell. A person is going to hell on their own free will because they are rejecting Jesus. But why are we going through all this difficulty, this COVID, and this COVID, and that COVID? See, brother. See, see, brother. Unhappiness. See, brother. Bad things. See, brother. Let me tell you one thing. We are living in a fallen world. Supposing, for example, you know, if you're if you're going on a, on a, on an aircraft. And that on that aircraft, that pilot is basically drunk. Instead of when he has to probably, you know, take off the flight, he basically presses the, he doesn't press the, this thing. Is the flight going to take off? The flight is simply going to crash because after that, it's going to be crossing the runway he's, and everybody's going to be lost. Now, is it because the people in that flight were all, all bad people? No. But because of one person's mistake, in the same way, when we are walking on this, on this planet Earth, there is a sin of, of the whole world. That there, is, there is sin which gives access to the devil. And because you are in that world, you also are facing the restrictions, the constrictions, the, the limitations of not being able to travel. But when you know who you have with you, in spite of all that is happening around you, you will still be able to walk with freedom. We'll still be able to walk with victory. Are you with me? Now, for example, Jesus is in the boat with, with his disciples. He tells them, let's go across to the other side. Jesus is sleeping. He has given them the, the word to go across to the other side. Did he tell them to go halfway and get drowned? What did he tell them? Let's go across to the other side. So the very fact that they had a promise from him that let's go to the other side, they should have believed that they are going to the other side. In between the storm came. Now, what are they telling Jesus? Yes. Don't you know that we are all perishing? What are you doing? Sleeping? Shut up! And he gets up, he comes to the storm and he says, what happened to your faith? You have little faith. In the same way, now we are living in this planet. There's a pandemic. There's this thing happening. But does the word of God also tell us that towards the end days, towards the days before Jesus returns, there will be pandemics. There'll be wars. There'll be killings. There'll be abortions. There'll be all these things happening. All that is happening right now is exactly what the Bible has been telling us of the last days. And we are living as though we have come here to live forever. But what is happening right now, these pandemics, these tragedies, these murders, these people becoming cold and becoming, you know, all self-centered. All these are signs of the end times. It's all written in scripture. So when you know scripture and you know these things are happening, it's time for us not to feel depressed. It's not time for us to be, it's time for us to rejoice because our salvation is much closer. It's time for Jesus to return. No, brother, when we flood Noah, Noah, he said, this is the first and last time I'm going to have this destruction. Yeah. But 
He will never do it again. He will never send the floods. He will never send anything wrong. Yeah, but yeah, I'll never do this again. He said. Yeah, but end times meaning did Jesus say that he will return again? So he said that he will return again. The disciples asked him, Lord, when will all these things happen? When will we know that it's time for you to return? He says, this is not for you to know. This is not even I don't know. Only the father knows. Did he say that? So, but he said something also, he says. Before all these things happen, he says, this is the sign that will happen. These are the signs that will precede before my second coming. He said that, right? If you go to Matthew chapter 24, you go to, you go to Gospel of Luke chapter, chapter 23, 22, you will see all that towards the last day. I don't want to go and preach that right now, but that's not good news. That, that Everyone will get into panic situation. But when you know that these things are going to happen and you are believing the word of God, isn't it time for you to celebrate? Obviously, oh, my little nice house, my nice garden, I'm very happy with my house. You're going to live in mansions for all eternity. You're going to be walking on the streets of gold. So where is your focus should be? Is it better to be here on this planet Earth? Go to work. Oh my God, catch that bus number X26 now and catch the underground train and take my little tiffin and everybody's eating their burgers. I'm sitting and eating my little bhaji puri. <laughs> and then come back and wait for the weekend. We can come cut the grass, clean the floor. What sort of life? Again, finish Saturday, Sunday, again, go to work again, my little different, again, that part are you? Well, well, whatever. Which is better? Come on, which is better? Better to be living in the mansions of gold, walking on the street. That's what the book of Revelation tells us that one day we are going to be with the Lord for all eternity. There'll be no crying, no more pain. But we are so happy here to be on this planet. We seem to love this world. We love our TV. We love our house. We love our garden. But we are going to be having living in mansions of, and we are going to walk on streets of gold. But instead of thinking about it, let heaven stay, Baba. Right now, we are, let us enjoy. No? What are you talking about afterwards, heaven? And that, let me, when we retire. We can't see it. That's why we don't believe. That's why we need to go to the word, no, brother. The word of God is, is something that we need to be abreast. See, We'll be reading uh, the, the, the times of, of London. We'll be reading of, you know, times of India. We'll go to the internet. Now, you know, you don't have any problem. You can even read the times of the Eskimos also. You have access to every times of the newspaper. Correct? You even, even, even though you don't want to be bothered what's happening at the North Pole, what the Eskimo in which Inglu is living, you got I mean, You can read their times also because of the internet. So you got access to so much of information right now. Whoever opens up this Bible and reads the good news, which is the same yesterday, today and forever, it doesn't change. It doesn't change. And because the good news is the good news, it's too good to be true news. We need to spend time with the good news. Read the Bible. Study it. Do what it says. And you'll be living as though, you know, it doesn't matter whether, you know, he comes at cockscrow, he comes at midnight, because he's going to come like a thief in the night. You know, if you read the uh, scri scriptures during the season of Advent, you will read those scriptures. He's going to come like a thief in the night when everybody is saying everything is going fine. All of a sudden, destruction hits. That's exactly how he's going to come. But that's what the scriptures say. And that's what is happening. Many people think, you know what, that, you know what, right now I'm having a good job. Everything is fine. And, uh, yes, so, uh, so you don't see tomorrow. But when you come to the word, you are not supposed to live in fear. You are supposed to live with excitement. That even though you're living on this earth, you don't belong to this earth. You belong to heaven. And so you are going to make a difference in your own lifetime of reaching out to people who don't know Christ. We are supposed to be lights to a world living in darkness. And the more we have a relationship with the Lord, no matter whether I'm at my workplace, whether I'm in the bus, whether I'm in the public train, whether I'm in the supermarket, wherever I am, I'm simply going to give the light of Christ to others. Because that light of Christ is because of that relationship that I have with my God. And the more I have a relationship with my God, I'm going to live with my God. Not that thing is going to be all rosy. Not that things are going to be all fine. But in spite of it, I'll still have a smile on my face. I'll still have the enthusiasm to walk every day knowing that my God is walking with me. Amen? So, where were we? We were on Mark chapter 16. Verses. Let's go back to Mark chapter 16, verses 16 and 18. 
And if you really begin to understand this, my dear sisters and brothers, you will see that this is exactly what we are called to do. Mark chapter 16, verses 16 and 18. So it says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow. So if you believe the word, these signs shall follow you. Now, many times when we go to workplace or in our, in our church or in our community, we hear, somebody, we hear somebody is not well. We say, oh, not well. Oh, when since uh, we are more interested to know more details about what happened. And what, what is the use of knowing what the details are? All that you do is just go and visit that home, give them the truth, pray over them and get them out of their bed. You know, we, sh we should be excited to go and share the gospel. Do you think that you really need to go to a pulpit sometimes? You don't need to go to a pulpit. You don't need to go to a, what we call as church. The church is where people of God need you to hear the gospel. There are people, you know, sometimes who need to hear the truth. So when you and I go and start sharing the truth to people who are in problem, through the truth that they hear and which sets them free, their faith is going to rise up and they are going to come to Christ. Otherwise, it's all going to be, you know what? Just religion. I go for my Sunday Mass. I did my rosary. I prayed my novena. I give the masses for the souls. And all sorts of things will do. But actually speaking, all you need to do is just believe his word. Do what his word says. And you are living in heaven here on earth. Not that your problems are not there. But you have the strength. You have the grace. You have the, you have the power. You have the confidence to walk even through fire and even through the storm. And walk on to the other side absolutely victorious. Amen. So all these signs shall follow those them that believe. Now, we'll take up just a five minutes break. And when we come back, I want to talk about, you know, our words, how our words carry power and how these words can take us. See where we are right now, just to give an introduction before I before, I, before, before the break, you know, where we are right now in our life is because of the words we have been speaking. But the good news is, the too good to be new, true news is, the gospel is that you can change where you can be by changing the words that you're speaking. You change your words and you will see because of that power. We have been made in the image and likeness of God. God has given us the power. We, our words carry power. Sometimes we call our children, you know, sometimes they're not being, you monkey, you monkey, useless fellow. That's what he becomes. And then I'll call Melanie to share our own testimony of this boy of us, Aaron. She will be, she'll be starting the, the, the testimony with our introduction of him. He knows exactly. He will, will share it. And then you see the power of the words, what happens, how God will show you that how much our words carry power. Sorry? Not only that, life and death is in the power of our tongue. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. Yeah. Somebody say, you this, you that. You yeah. that Correct. Life and death is in the power of our tongue. So where you want to be, change your words according to the word. Stop speaking words. Even though you're tempted to speak exactly that you're, you're, you want to call somebody an ass because of what he did like an ass. So calling an ass, you know, I know what you did was not right, but I know you can do better. A lot of things can change. Yeah. 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 Amen. Praise God. So let's just stay, uh, let, before we take a break, let's just close by saying, Father, we thank you and praise you for giving us the understanding of what it means to believe, what your son Jesus has done for us on the cross. And Lord, because you have created us in your own image and likeness, you have given us your son Jesus when we believed in him as our Lord, God and Savior. Today, Lord, we can be your hands, your feet, your heart, your mind on this earth going out to share the good news and allowing Lord the Holy Spirit to confirm what we are sharing with accompanying signs and wonders for showing us this and much more. We thank you and we praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God.